Hi, it's Pastor Pete here. I'm one of the ministry team in Shoreline Church where I'm sitting on the steps. I'm also a founder member of Green Pastures, which is a national ministry which buys property to house homeless people across the UK. During the last 13 years, we've most probably housed thousands of people and also introduced many to knowing Christ as Lord and Saviour. The wonderful thing about the ministry we're doing here at the moment in Southport is we've introduced a, a food bank and that food bank is now ministering to some 600 people every week. We are seeing not only people coming and receiving the food, but some of them beginning to volunteers to help. So we have now uh, tens of volunteers that are coming and on a daily basis, they are actually giving the food out. You're gonna see some stories now of lives that have been changed because of their involvement with this food bank and because it does actually not just talk about Christ, but show Christ to the world. Warm hands hold you. Well, first met Peter around about 20 years ago. I've just moved to the area, Southport, and um, so I, I, I was invited to an outreach at Stanley High School. Uh, my first motivation was, got no money, nothing else to do, uh, it'll be a laugh, can maybe make fun of a few people. Um, but, you know, things started to make sense, sort of the stuff was here and, and whatnot, and shortly after that, um, I handed myself in, into the police because I've been on the run for a good year and a half. This is the courthouse where Mark was brought. Unbeknown to us, he was a fugitive from the law and he was being pursued for grievous bodily harm. When we did see him two days later, he said, now I've become a Christian, I felt I needed to change my life and put things right. About four months later, we came to this courthouse and here he actually was sentenced to six months in a youth offenders. We had stood up for him in court and hoped he wouldn't be sentenced, but he was. I uh, kept my nose down until I can get released, come back to Southport and join the church again. Um, ch church were very, very supportive. Um, welcome back with open arms. In fact, Peter used to visit me um, on a regular basis. I started my journey, but I quickly came under attack. Even though I was still attending church, I disassociated myself. I isolated myself so much um, that that's where my anxiety has developed. Um, it was only a couple of years ago, uh, maybe six months before the food bank started, um, that I started getting counselling, um, you know, get back into serving. I work on the main doors. I am the person who, who um, serves the clients. Uh, to uh, take the names of the registers to come in and hand them the food parcels. Uh, I'm also in charge of administration and advertising as well, uh, which means I'm um, updating the register, signing up new clients. He really actually comes to his own when he's dealing with the public that come to the door and uh, collect their bags. I have heard that people have come asking to talk to Mark. People, I think, identify clearly uh, with him because he's been uh, where they are. It's not just theory with Mark. It's not a nice movie that he saw one day and feels, oh, I want to go and help somebody. He has been uh, at ground level um, and experienced the difficulties that some of these people um, that come to him, that come to the food bank, experience. It's like it isn't me who sat there. It's like, Talking to you now, um, just, um, I'm not in ministry, I'm sweating um, and, and whatnot, I'm really uncomfortable, but um, when I'm doing the work that God requires of me, uh, I'm a different person and, and that's what I love. It's uh, meeting the need in the community. Um, I'm friending people. And now we've seen how Working in the food bank, Mark's story has unfolded the fact of how he's been able to overcome his anxiety problems, which is wonderful, and that's what Christ does within our lives. He changes us. 
Over the last three months, we've seen eight people come to know Christ through the food bank. And of course, their lives have been changed. And those lives being changed are according to the scriptures. When we come to Christ, we become a new creation. And what we're seeing at the moment is only a, the tip of the iceberg of what is happening when we're ministering like this. And so these next clips are going to be talking about some of those people who have touched new life in Christ because of food bank ministry. I have no family, no blood family at all. My husband passed away a few years ago and the church are my family. I used to drink a lot. I was a drinker and my family didn't help me at all with it. They just used to say, you know, go and drink somewhere else. And yet the people at the church never gave up on me. They've given me help, they've talked to me, they've advised me, they've listened to me. They've accepted me when I've not been well. At times I benefit from getting things from the food bank and at other times I give to the food bank when I can. I do it because it benefits the community and I'd like to give back to the church because they've given me so much. I like to help if I can. Bearing all my shame, just you there. 1 John 3, 9, it called, uh, If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. That's me, Vavis Vavis. My name's Mark and I've been volunteering with the food bank for four months. Like, time flies. And I'm thinking, this is amazing because suddenly it's like six, seven o'clock. You go through the day and that. And where you used to be at home and that, doing the wrong stuff and that, time would just like stand still. I enjoy the company, friendly company and that. Yeah, just loving people. And that's what God's gave me, to love people and that. And uh, I just feel so wonderful to help people. That's, I still got, I'm still on a learning curve, but I'll be learning forever, but that's what God's, God's intended for me to do. <laughs> Primarily, one would think of a food bank as a place that feeds people. And yes, that's what it does. But we've seen another side to the food bank. The people who've become involved in it and become part of the serving team, which is a growing team, those people begin to get a sense of security, identity, maturity, um, a sense of value because they have a place and they're serving others, makes them feel good about themselves good about their uh, walk in the Lord and it also helps them realise they're doing exactly what Jesus said which is being his hands and his feet among the community in a very practical and connecting way. I got involved in the food bank um, because I needed food bank um, so I started off as one of the people coming through the doors and I felt that when I didn't need it as often as I had. Uh, I wanted to give something back and I started doing that by baking every Saturday and bringing in cake or biscuits. I wasn't a member of Shoreline Church at that time. Um, I must admit that um, I had slipped away from the church after, for a number of years but it did bring me back into, it brought me back into the church and I feel as if I've found my family again. Knowing that everybody here is here for me, they're praying, they're praying for me. I've never had that before and it's so over overwhelming. It's basically my father's been diagnosed with cancer and I've not seen him for such a long time, uh, a good many years. And it's because of the church that I found the courage to go and see him and forgive and forget. And yeah, to forgive and forget and to spend his last weeks with him, so. And if I hadn't come back to the church, I'd still be that bitter person that I was when my mum passed away five years ago. 
if it hadn't been for, for the need of needing food bank at that the time that I started to come to food bank, I'd never have found the church, I'd have never felt welcomed into the family and I'd have never felt that I need to give back. Food bank helped me at a time of need and through that time of need it gave me belonging and by belonging sometimes you feel helps in the healing process knowing that there's somebody there to help, somebody there to support and by giving that back I'm giving it to other people as well to not just come to food bank because they need to but to walk through those doors on a Sunday and find what I found. Well, we hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Here we are on Southport Railway Station. Of course, this talks about journeys, and we're on a journey, aren't we, in serving Christ? You've seen Mark and how his life has changed by working within the food bank. His anxiety problem that he has has lessened, and that's because he's actually been serving the Lord. And when we serve the Lord and we have our lives fulfilled, with being the servants of Christ, it makes a difference. It brings freedom and you've seen freedom in other people's lives. And we're saying to you today, you know, as we act our lives out and we serve Christ with diligence and in the way he intended us to live our Christian lives, then we get freedom in our lives as well. So we just pray that God will bless you where you are in your community. And some of the things you've seen will encourage you to be out there amongst those mar most marginalized in your community. We want to thank you for listening to this programme today and the opportunity of talking to you. And we just hope that there is another time we can come back to you this screen and talk to you again. So God bless you in all you're doing and we pray that the Lord will help you to serve him better.